Hello everyone, welcome back to Math Specs. My name is Stephanie and today we're going to discuss the subtraction of integers. So let's get started. So we're first going to recall what we learned in the previous section, which was the addition of integers. So here on the left hand side, we have um, addition problems that hopefully look familiar to you from the last section. Um, and we want to know on the right hand side, what are the equivalent subtraction problems um, since we're still dealing with integers. So for uh, for a we have five plus negative two is equal to three. And in the last section, we discussed how you can find this sum. But now we want to know what would this look like if we were to subtract them. So it would look something familiar to you as five minus two is equal to three. And for B, we have negative two plus negative four is equal to negative six. So what would this look like as a subtraction problem? It would look like negative two minus four is equal to negative six. So in this slide, you can see what we've learned in the last section of adding these negative numbers. And today we're going to learn how we can convert these subtraction problems to the addition problems we already have worked with, okay? So our subtraction rule is that when we subtract B from A, we add the opposite of B to A. So here we have A minus B. And in order to subtract B from A, we add um, and we add the opposite of B. So here B is being subtracted, so we add the positive sign, and we put the minus sign of B because um, the opposite of positive B would be negative B. So an example of this using numbers would be something like if we had one minus four, if we wanted to subtract four from one, we would keep one the same we would add, and the opposite of positive four would be negative four, something like that, okay? And so that the result would be the difference of A minus B, um, of A and B. So we changed the subtraction to addition by adding the opposite. So we've seen problems like this, where we would have two plus negative three, and we would do this on the number line um, if you recall, we would be at positive two and we would add negative three. So we would move to the left by three spaces on the number line, if you recall. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and continue. So we, here we have another example. We have nine minus two. Um, if we were gonna use the subtraction rule, we would keep nine the same. We would add instead of subtract and we would write the opposite of positive two, which is negative two. And this is also known as the keep, um, add, opposite. So we would keep the same number, we would keep the first number the same. So let's just do another example. We would keep one the same, we would add, and we would um, write the opposite of the, of the number, so it'd be negative three. Okay, so keep at opposite. Um, this could be helpful for you to kind of remember what to do. So let's go ahead and do some examples. So here, if we use our subtraction rule, we keep the nine the same, we add instead of subtract, and we write the opposite of negative 11. Of 11, it would be negative 11, and our answer would be negative two. And you can do this on the number line as well. You can go to nine, positive nine, and move negative 11 spaces to the left. And you would, you would probably, you would, you would most likely land on negative two. Okay. Um, okay. So let's go to the next example. We have 11 minus nine. Um, here you can just you can do it one of two ways. You say. 11 minus nine is two, or you can, using our rule, we would write, um, we would keep the 11 the same, we would add, and we would write the opposite of positive nine, which would be negative nine. So 11 plus negative 
nine would give us two. Okay, and I would highly, highly encourage you to revisit the um, addition of integers because this is these are problems that we have uh, looked at in you know in different ways. We've used the number line. That's another way for you, kind of a, a technique um, that is good for visualizing what we're doing, and it would just be good practice. Okay, so let's continue. So here we have negative two minus negative seven. So we want to find the difference of this problem. So we're going to use our subtraction rule that we just discussed, or also known as the keep add and the opposite. Okay, so we have negative two minus negative seven. So I'm gonna keep negative two the same, bring it down. Instead of the minus sign, I'm going to add, and I'm going to add the opposite of this, which would be um, positive seven. So just write seven. And now we can do this um, addition. So negative two plus seven would give me positive five. Okay. So hopefully that is making sense. If you have any questions, go ahead and leave them down in the comment section down below and I'll be happy to answer them. So let's go ahead and do these problems. We have negative five minus three. So I'm going to use the subtraction rule or the keep add opposite so that I can work with subtraction. Um, so I can work with addition. So I have negative five, I keep negative five the same. Instead of the subtraction, I add, and I add the opposite here is positive three, so it'd be negative three. So negative five plus negative three is gonna give me a negative eight. And of course you can do this on, on the number line. We would be at negative five. And if we add negative three, we would be moving three spaces to the left. So we would go one, two, three, and we would land at negative eight. Okay, so here's what it would look like on the number line. Okay. So going on to this side, on the right hand side, we have one minus two minus four minus negative four. So um, if you recall our addition properties is that we can add these in any way that we like when we have three numbers. So you can start here or you can start here, whichever one you prefer. Um, and so I am actually going to start with one minus two because I want to start on the left going towards the right. So I'm going to use my subtraction rule, keep add opposites. I'm going to keep the one the same. Instead of subtracting, I'm going to add. I'm going to add the opposite of negative of two, which is negative two. I'm going to bring this down. So I'm going to do this sum first. One plus negative two is going to give me negative one. And now I'm going to bring all of this down, minus negative four. And again, I'm going to use my subtraction rule again. So I'm going to keep negative one the same. I'm going to add instead of subtract. And I'm going to add the opposite of negative four, which will be four, positive four. So now I do this sum. So negative one plus four is going to give me positive three. Okay. So if you have any questions, um, I would say go ahead and try it. Try it um, starting on this side if you like, but I think this way is a bit more clear because we're starting on the left working towards the right. Okay. So let's go ahead and continue to the next slide. So here we have um, some vocabulary that I would encourage you to put into some type of flashcard. Um, so our vocabulary term is terms. So terms are when, when we have an expression and it is written as a sum or addition, the parts that are, that are added are called the terms of the expression. So if we use our, um, our subtraction rule, here you see we have negative two minus X, um, and so we would need to rewrite this as addition. So we would write negative two, we would 
keep the negative to the same, we would add and would add the opposite of this. So now we have addition and our terms would be negative two and negative x because these two things are being added, okay? And we're gonna do some examples to follow right now. So we write it as a sum. So we write negative two plus negative x and our terms here are the two, uh, uh, are the two parts that are being added. So the, my first part would be negative two and my second part would be negative x. Okay. So in this example, on this slide, we're asked to find the terms of the expression. So for a, we see here we have x minus three. We need to turn that into a sum. So I'm going to use, for all of these, I'm going to use the keep um, add opposite, also known as our subtraction rule, okay? This just is a good way to remember what we're doing each step of the way. So for A, we're going to keep the X the same. Instead of subtracting, we're going to add, and we're going to add the opposite of positive 3, which will be negative 3. So my terms would be the two parts that are being added. So what is being added here? We're adding x and we're adding negative three, okay? For b, we have negative two minus four x. So we need to turn this into um, a sum. So we're gonna use our keep add opposite uh, rule. So we're gonna keep negative two the same. Instead of subtracting, we're going to add, and we're gonna add the opposite of positive four x, so it will be negative four x. So what is being added here? We have negative two plus negative four x. So our two terms will be negative two and negative four x. For C, we have negative three plus nine x. So we already have a sum. So our terms here um, would be the two parts that are being added. So what is being added in C? It would be negative three and nine x, okay? And for D, we have eight x plus two. So we already have a sum. So our terms would be the two parts that are being added. And here we are adding eight x and two. So those would be the terms of this expression, okay? And this is um, important for us to know because we're going to be combining like terms when we are solving for, um, for equations and we're using addition and subtraction, multiplication and division. So we might have a situation kind of an aside here, we might have a situation where we have 8x minus 2 plus 3x is equal to, you know, 5 plus x or something like that. And we would be asked to collect our like terms on the left-hand side. So we would, you know, find our like terms, so 8x and 3x. So it's important for you to understand the vocabulary of, of terms and how to identify them because um, we're going to be doing a lot more in the later sections. So that is the conclusion of our presentation today on the subtraction of integers. Next time we're going to be finding differences and evaluating expressions as well as more practice finding the terms of the expression in our practice set. Thank you so much for joining me today and I do hope that you have a good rest of your day.